The Immersive Digital Experiences Alliance is a non-profit industry association developing a family of royalty-free technical specifications to enable the digital future. Our members bring world-class experience in light field and holographic imaging, distribution networks, and content creation. You can learn more at immersivealliance.org. The IDEA Specialized Contract Track consists of eight segments covering all aspects of immersive media. In this segment, we'll go behind the scenes of a recent production shoot using light field cinematography. Hi, I'm Chris Chesimentum from Visby. Visby is a light field imaging company. In a nutshell, we make software to make and playback holograms, holographic videos for holographic displays, immersive experiences, even computer vision applications. Our technology is motivated by two considerations. One, what we've built, which is based on the light field approach to holography, is an extension of photography, not volumetric video. There are certain things and certain situations where we think that this photographic approach excels, such as when filming people or outdoor scenes. Number two, we put the sophistication in the software. We use computer vision and advanced signal processing methods to reduce the cost and logistical burden for example, the amount of hardware or cameras that would otherwise be needed to capture holograms this way. We can even capture light fields with a single mobile device. This particular shoot, however, was a bit larger in Endeavor. This was one of the first commercial light field shoots, as well as the first light, sh light field shoot shot on location, among another, a number of other technical firsts. We wanted to do something that was visually compelling to showcase the light field future and where media and entertainment are going. But we also wanted to demonstrate the incredible future we have coming, enabled by the edge compute and high bandwidth low latency of Charter's network, as well as the stunning display made by the Looking at Glass factory. We were able to put something pretty special together. Here are some of our Visby team members and partners to tell you a little bit more about how it all came together. Thanks for that overview, Chris. I'm Randy Shapiro. I'm the operations manager at Visby Camera Corporation, um, which means that I do internal things, but also get to spearhead our, uh, our operations on productions. So um, we were delighted to partner with Charter on this project, um, and we're excited to take light fields to the next level. What you would typically do um, is uh, establish the content that you're shooting and understand how that exists in space. And then you design a camera array that accommodates that, right? Because you have to have um, all of that action needs to be captured by multiple cameras in order for it to be successful and to be something that can, uh, you know, that can be reconstructed as a light field. We did a two day production. Um, the first day was just for setup and testing. Um, obviously, you know, when you are uh, doing a production like this where you don't want to be fixing stuff in post, right? Because it's not just one camera that you're trying to fix in post. It's a hundred, right? So you want to get it right the first time. You want to make sure that everything's working properly. Uh, we tested some subject matter on day one just to make sure that everything was working correctly as well and ran the root yoga sequence, et cetera, after setup. Um, so the day starts with loadout. Um, so Radiant, again, they managed the array and the cameras. Um, they uh, had a really great design for the array to reduce the, the weight limit and make sure that it could fix, fit into a box truck. Um, brought that to the location, then there was setup. Um, so it's five rings of cameras that get set up. So that's a lot of wiring um, and then pointing and then <laughs> focusing and um, making sure that, you know, when we point the cameras that we have sufficiently mapped out what the actual action box is for the whole sequence in the camera. And then at that point, what you do is you calibrate. So we have calibration charts and basically that just allows us to make sure that we can sync um, all of the cameras and we know where the cameras are in time and space, which is super important for the reconstruction of the light field. After we wrapped, um, then we sent uh, like the center camera, and then also some side peripheral cameras to the client in order for them to be able to select the take that they wanted us to develop. Um, so at that point, once they'd made the selection of the take that they preferred, um, we worked with the creative team in order to generate the trajectory for the camera. So, you know, if you're developing for HMD, which this 
can also, you know, the light fields can also go into, you don't think about that, but for a holographic display, you're serving a cone of views, um, not the full, you know, light field. So you have like a kind of a cluster of virtual cameras that you place relative to the light field in order to uh, create the, the set of views that you want to display on the, on the holographic display at any given time. So we worked with the creative team in order to create the trajectory that would accomplish their goals for the sort of inception, um, you know, piece within the piece. And it's just really cool to see, you know, this hologram with the, the we shot that's, you know, um, outdoors and has specularity. It looks really great. Like, you know, all of the positions really pop and it's really cool to be able to see it without a headset to have like this communal um, experience of it. So um, anyway, thank you. And uh, on to the, the next piece, I think Michael Mansori is going to talk to us about the array itself. So thank you. Hi there everyone, Michael Mansori from Radiant. From our perspective at Radiant, we're actually in a very interesting space since we have this incredible opportunity to create solutions and collaborate both in volumetric as well as light field. A few months ago, we had this incredible opportunity to collaborate with our partners once again at Visby and Charter. But this time, for a far, far reaching scope, well beyond what we thought was even possible, which is to stream the light fields directly to someone's home, into their TV sets, the future TVs, the light field displays, well beyond HMDs. In order to make this happen, we also have to change our approach of capture since Charter wanted to move beyond just entertainment and create a scenario of a trainer as well as uh, the learner. The learner is at home, the trainer is the light field. And the learner had to be able to navigate themselves and see the, the virtually shoulder to shoulder, see the perspective from every viewpoint. So we had to now create this 180 degree light field capture systems. But we also had to make sure that it was transportable. So we had to be able to pack it up, put it in a truck, get to location, unpack it, set it up within a few hours, shoot and come back home. And we were fortunate enough to capture some behind the scenes. Love to share it with you. And thank you very much for your time and hope we have the opportunity to collaborate with you. Thank you.
Hi, my name is Alexandre de Chamonquitri. I'm a research engineer at Visby. And one of my roles in this shoot was to translate the engineering considerations into actual recommendations for camera placement, the configuration of the rig, and some of the calibration procedure. So for this shoot, this was the first time that we were able to shoot outdoors. We were shooting with natural light, with no green screen. So we had to take great care to make sure that our rig was uh, able to see the foreground and background and have a, a clean background and also make sure that uh, cameras don't obstruct each other. The configuration of our rig in this case is a hundred Sony RX zeros with 20 of them being able to record at 4K resolution. And they're arranged in a half cylinder shape so that we can get a wide range of coverage of our subject matter at the same time avoiding uh, having any cameras obstruct each other. So um, the calibration procedure is something that we need in order to make sure that we can model the parameters of our camera, things like lens distortion, focal length, et cetera, and also be able to measure with a great amount of precision the relative positions of cameras with one another. And that is something that we need in order to a, reconstruct a light field of the scene, which is that, um, which means that we need to be able to uh, tell uh, where light is coming from, where it's going, and um, in all directions. And we'll have uh, some of our other engineers tell you more about that. Thank you. So in our pipeline, we use a combination of you know, classical image processing techniques, um, signal processing techniques, and computer vision, um, and apply that all on the cloud across uh, massive amounts of data that we're taking in. Um, so our, as, as far as image processing goes, um, you know, the obvious challenge that we had to face was uh, making a COVID safe production. And to do that, we had to do an outdoor shoot uh, meaning no green screen. Um, so we had uh, foreground and background separation to take care of. Um, and they, you know, with the added bonus of having, you know, the kind of beautiful outdoors, hilltop, you know, winery um, overlooking an ocean. Um, and with that, you know, that allows us to composite back into different scenes as well. Um, and as far as the signal processing techniques go, uh, you know, we had a different uh, dynamic multi-resolution that uh, kind of gets us the best of both worlds in terms of the speed and the accuracy that we're able to achieve. Um, and so most of the magic happens um, with our you know, computer vision um, processing um, and where we're fusing all the data that we're getting from you know, the 100 cameras together. Um, and so if you think about what a camera does, it takes the 3D world and puts it into 2D. Um, and by inverting essentially what the camera does, we're able to recover things like the scene composition, uh, the color, the specularity. Um, and so I kind of alluded to this earlier that we have all this massive amount of data that we're dealing with here uh, to create these holograms. And so to process it, we actually use uh, uh, Google Cloud uh, to help us out. And so we have two different clusters uh, with them. One is GPU accelerated and one is compute optimized. Um, and that's all managed using Kubernetes. Um, and so the 100 cameras that we used, uh, 20 of them were uh, 4K cameras. Um, so like a, a minute was getting up to a gigabyte. Um, and uh, we had 80, uh, 1080p resolution um, and all being shot at 30 frames per second. Um, and this enabled us to get the highest quality of experience for our given bandwidth. Um, and so all this came together to create the hologram that you've seen. Our rendering server is designed to generate high quality images from our light field encoding. To achieve this, we've created a flexible API for requesting views from our rendering servers, which are running independently of one another from whichever particular piece of content we choose. This kind of scalability is required because we're rendering 8K by 8K. 
This amount of pixels is comparable to eight VR headsets, and light field rendering already has pretty high performance requirements. These pixels make up what Looking Glass Factory describes as a quilt. This quilt is made up of 45 views from left to right, spanning 40 degrees. Because the views can be rendered individually, we have a clear path for dividing the job up between rendering servers. Rendering locally on one machine would take too long and cause visual artifacts such as stuttering in the display, which renders nominally at 60 Hertz. After the renders are completed, we still need to accommodate sending the renders over the network. The quilt made up of our renders will also be post-processed to prepare for display. Throughout this process, you don't want to sacrifice the rendering quality. Our goal was to take advantage of all the rendering capability of scaled compute and give a really beautiful result. Thanks to the tireless work of our partners and our team, we were able to produce something really special. As you can see, there was a lot of planning and execution required, but things are getting closer to traditional pre-production and production. The great thing is that incredible creatives are leaning in and doing this today and being successful at it. This means two things. Number one, by publishing great looking holographic content today, the industry and the public are getting to see innovative and beautiful new kinds of content that are accessible with technology that already exists. And number two, the process gets more and more streamlined, both for us at Visby and as an industry as a whole, as we collect new learnings from each time we do this. Obviously, we're always working to streamline how light field production fits into existing workflows and really to make the process easier in general. But I have no doubt that this will soon be ready for wider adoption. And the thing that excites me the most is light field capture and content production at scale. Overall, the future is bright for using light field capture technology for holographic displays, AR, VR, XR, and other Rs, and even virtual production. I hope you're as excited about the future as we are. On behalf of the Visby team and our partners, thank you. Thanks for joining us in this segment from the Immersive Digital Experiences Alliance. IDEA is a nonprofit industry group developing a family of royalty-free technical specifications to enable the digital future. You can learn more at immersivealliance.org. You can join IDEA, download the ITMF specifications or white paper, or just join our mailing list to stay informed. Thanks for joining us today.